Thanks very much, Mark. Um, I have to say, as a GP, when, when I saw Mark lying on that bench, he was just lying down for that tiny bit too long for my comfort. <laughs> and I was wondering where the defibrillators were in this organization. <laughs> um, as mentioned, um, we have been thinking very hard that this must follow, this must continue. Um, this is a movement that started. And we mentioned on, on Wednesday morning that in 2012, the Olympics will come to London. And it will be two years following this Congress. And so we hope that in 2012, we plan to hold the second Healthy Parks, Healthy People Congress. This European-supported Congress would take place in London immediately following the Olympics. The Olympics will finish on the closing ceremony of the Paralympics on the 9th of September. The opening ceremony is on the 27th of July. And we will hopefully be able to use some of the facilities of the Olympics, the Olympic Village. We will definitely be focused around the Olympic Park, which Nigel here is representing. And the aim will be to take what we have started at this Congress into the international sphere. So this will become the beginning of a very, very big and great way forward to link people and their environment. And as you heard from Stefan and his fantastic enthusiasm and energy and drive, that there could be a really big picture here that will be linked to the Olympics with this Congress. But we can't make decisions immediately, unfortunately, although it is always very tempting. So we have to go back to our respective organizations to confirm a commitment, and we will get that hopefully all completely confirmed after our elections completed in the UK in June of this year. I think all of us will just be absolutely um, in awe of what they've achieved here in Parks Victoria for this Congress of Healthy Parks, Healthy People. And we'd like to thank the task force for the opportunity to take it forward into London. So we will get a mandate um, from them to say, yes, we can do this, and we will hopefully get that commitment and say, yes, we will do this. And by June this year, we'll be on our way to the second Congress. I think it would be important, though, before we make too many assumptions, is to decide who would actually be attempting or be able to come to that Congress. And I think the best way of understanding that is for all of you who feel that you would like to attend the Congress in London in 2012 to, to take a stand and stand up now. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I'm very relieved that all the people on the bench stood up. <laughs> um, because I think I would be worried, but that does show an immense amount of support. Thank you. This would not be a second Congress if it hadn't been a first Congress. And I am going to just take this small opportunity now um, just to just summarize one aspect that came out from this Congress. I asked people around what they thought of, a, of the conference and the Congress. And two people said, this is the greatest conference I've ever been to. Not just the best, but the greatest. And if you look up, greatness cannot be achieved without passion. And I think the inspiration of that greatness comes from Mark Stone, who had a vision, he's had the leadership, and he's taken it forward. He said earlier on, think big, beyond the accepted, plan carefully, and hit hard. Mark, you did that. Thank you. But on his own, he couldn't do anything. And I think we have to, to look to John Sr. and his team, who have worked unbelievably hard to make this happen, and the 100 volunteers. 
And I know they've been mentioned many times, but I think as we close in the last few minutes of this Congress, I think we can just say it again, show our appreciation for the immense amount of work that's taken place. Thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you in London.